first two presentations in the series on logic dealt with set theory, and I said in the second of those presentations that the reason we introduced, I introduced the concepts and terminology associated with set theory is that they will be useful, they will be needed, required, when we came to the set theoretic semantics associated with conventional logic. I now want to, in this presentation, to deal with the principle of mathematical induction. Again, this is a preparatory video, necessary because we will often employ the principle of mathematical induction for the purposes of proving that our logical theory, our logical system, has certain properties. Now let me first describe for those among the audience who aren't natural mathematicians, have little mathematical experience, a little bit about what the principle of mathematical induction is. And proofs by mathematical induction are means of proving properties of sequences of objects. And let me just draw out a, a number of objects. They can be anything at all put into correspondence with the natural numbers that is ordered in some way. And here we have a certain ordering of these objects, whatever they happen to be. And we and that sequence is non-ending, that is, it's an infinite sequence, let's suppose. Now, we want to prove that in relation to each of these members of the sequence, that member has a certain property. And one way, of course, that you might naturally think about demonstrating that each of these items, these objects in the never-ending sequence has a certain property is simply by checking them off. We first of all, you might think, first of all, you'll check that that one has a certain property and that that one has the same property and that that one does. But of course, that will be a never-ending process because no matter how far we go along the sequence, if the sequence is infinite, then there will always be a next object about which we have to prove that it has the property in question. Now the principle of mathematical induction is employed for the purposes of proving that all of these objects, no matter how far down the line, along the line we happen to go, have a certain property. And it works like this. First of all, we demonstrate that the first object in the sequence has the given property. Then we show that on the assumption that some, any object in the sequence has the property, so this is an assumption, if that is the case, that that object chosen at random has the property, then the next one in the sequence must have the property. And we demonstrate that that's the case. We seek to prove that that is the case. That if any object in the sequence has the property, then the next one following it in the sequence has the property. And on that basis, having previously established that the first object in the sequence has the property, we're done. Because if the first object in the sequence has the property, and we've just shown that it has, and if it's the case that for any object in the sequence, then the next one has it, well, then if the first one has it, then by this entailment, the second one has it. And if the second one has it, and I'll here draw a green circle around it to show you that that one does, and if that one does, then again, by this principle, that if any one does, the next one does, then on that basis, this one does. And because that one has it, then the one immediately following it has it. And so on and so on until we get here. That one has it. And then the next one does. And so on and so on. All the way along the line, or as far along the line as we care to go, because of course this sequence is never ending. That is the principle or an, or an application of the principle 
of mathematical induction. For the purposes of proving that all elements of infinite sequences have certain properties, then we show again, by way of step one, the first does, the first does, and then step two, if any does, then the next does. And those two together can be employed for the purposes of rolling out, as it were, a proof all the way along this never-ending sequence, as far along it as we care to go. Now, in the written materials that accompany this course, there are a number of examples of proofs by mathematical induction, simple proofs by mathematical uh, induction, and there are a number of exercises for you to go through in order to hone your skills in proofs by mathematical induction. And it is certainly true that there is one secret to, and only one secret, uh, to becoming proficient in proofs by mathematical induction, and that is practice, 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 practice. But uh, for the purposes of this video, let me just apply what we've described here uh, for the purposes of a, a proof of a very simple proposition. And that proposition is going to be this, that the number 2 and every second integer thereafter thereafter is even. So let's write out the sequence comprising starting with 2 and including at each step the second integer thereafter. So the first one, as I say, the first element in the sequence is, as I say, 2, and then we have 2 plus another 2, 1 times 2, and then we, for the next in the sequence, we have yet another 2, uh, which is 2 plus 2 times 2, and so on and so forth until we get to the nth, uh, n plus oneth uh, term in the sequence, and that is going to be 2 plus n times 2, and then the next element beyond that is going to be 2 plus n plus 1 times 2, and so on and so on, all the way up as far as we care to go. Now, by the two steps in mathematical induction that are set out here, it's required, first of all, to and I'll just change color, to show that the first element of the sequence is even. Well, we know. It's obvious 2 is even. So we're done. And I'll just give myself a little check mark there. Now the second stage in this proof by induction, that requires us, first of all, to assume that any element in this sequence is even. And then to show that under those circumstances, that assumption implies that the next element in the sequence is even. Well, let's take any element in this sequence, and we'll take specifically this n plus 1th element, which is 2 plus n times 2. And we're going to assume that that is even. Assume it's, my writing is absolutely atrocious, 
it's even. Now we call that assumption, we call that assumption the inductive hypothesis. That's just a somewhat technical term, I guess. Inductive hypothesis, and that is often abbreviated to I. H. That's our inductive hypothesis. And it's required to show that on the assumption of this inductive hypothesis that the next element in the sequence is even. So let's look here at what 2 plus n times 2 is. Well, we can simplify it. It's a matter of simple arithmetic. That is n plus 1 twos. Two plus n times two is simply n plus one lots of two, which is to say n plus one times two. So by our inductive hypothesis, that is even. But if that is even, then that plus two is even which is to say that if that is even, then 2 plus n plus 1 times 2 is even. But you'll notice that 2 plus n plus 1 times 2 is simply the next term in the sequence. So we know that if this term is even, then the one following it is even regardless of what n happens to be for any value of n. So we've demonstrated indeed, we've completed the second part, and we've shown that if any element does, specifically the element which is 2 plus n times 2, if that is indeed even, then the next element in the sequence is even. So again, going back here, we know that this is even, then since it is the very next one in the sequence is even, and because that is, then the next one in, in the sequence is even, and all the way down the line, we are, in other words, done, and for that I'm going to give myself two nice red check marks. Now again, this is a very simple example to give you some feel for the way in which proofs by mathematical induction work. This is not the only means of undertaking a proof uh, by mathematical induction. For more information, I refer you to the written materials which accompany this course. And as I said previously, those written materials contain exercises and some additional background which will help you to gain some proficiency in mathematical induction, or proofs by mathematical induction, which we will we'll be using quite widely when we come to, as I say, proving things about the logic that we are now going on to define. <laughs>